Hello, my name is Nicolaas, and today I would like to show you how to set up and play Exoplanet. Exoplanet is a game that's designed by Klaus Jürgen Vrede and it's published by 999 Games. It's a game for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and it plays in about 45 minutes. Exoplanet is a redesign of an older game from 2005 that's called Mesopotamia. In this game we have arrived on a new planet that's similar to ours and we will do our best to create a new home for us and coming generations. The winner of the game will be the player who has contributed the most to this common goal. Mm. So now let me take you to the table and show you how to set up and play. Welcome to Exoplanet. After years of traveling we have finally found a planet that is just like ours. It is our job to create a new environment for generations to come. We will do so by exploring the planet, gathering resources and bringing metal to the center of our planet to build a new city. Each team wants to be the team that has contributed the most to this goal. This will of course be the team that has collected the most points at the end of the game. Let me first show you how to set up the game. At the start of the game, you will place this center tile in the middle of the table. Now we take all tiles from the box and it's time to take a closer look at the back of each tile. When we take a closer look at the stack of tiles, we will notice that three of the tiles have this symbol on their back. This tells us that we will use these three tiles to create a starting setup. After that, you will have a stack of A and B tiles. Finally, we will be removing some tiles from the A stack and from the B stack and also a number of metal tokens depending on the player count. In the rulebook you can find how many tiles and how many tokens you will have to remove. After removing the necessary tiles, we will shuffle each deck separately and then we will place the A stack on top of the B stack and put it to the side. To finish our board setup, we will look for this city tile and it shows us, depending on player count, which side we will use. This side is used for two players and three players, while the other side is used in a four player game. Since I am setting up a two player game, we will place the tile with the two and three player side on top of the central tile. Now let's take these three starting tiles and we will add them to our central board, just like it's shown in the manual. So, we will be adding a tile here. We will also be adding a tile on this side. And then to finish, we will also start with this tile placed like this. In this game, we have three kinds of resources. We have power tokens, we have wood and we have metal tokens. What's special about the metal tokens is that they have a printed number on the back. These metal tokens will come into play later during the game. For now, we will just shuffle them so they are nicely mixed together. During the game, we will gather these three resources from the board. Each tile has a specific resource that you can find there. This is the mountain tile. Here you will find power tokens and this is the forest. In the forest, of course, you will find wood tokens. At the start of the game, you will place a number of wood and power tokens depending on the player count. So for our two player game, we will place two power tokens on the mountain and two wood tokens in the forest. This is a solar panel and to start the game, we will place this force marker on that tile. I will explain how we will use this force marker later during the explanation. During the game we will be using action cards. When we take a closer look at these action cards, you will see that four of the cards have a dark background, while the other ones have a clear background. The four cards with the dark background are starting cards. They show you the same symbol like we found on the starting tiles. As part of setup, we will take these four cards shuffle them and deal one to each player. We then shuffle the action cards and we place them in a stack near the game board. 
After that, each player also receives a card that shows the turn order and also shows the cost of each action that you will be able to take during the game. After setting up the game board, we will now proceed with the player setup. Each player chooses a color and receives a power strip, two solar panels, four domes, nine explorers, a power token and a limiter in his player color. We will place the limiter on the one four space of the player board and we will place the power token on the zero spot of the power track. And as a last step, each player places four explorers on this central tile. You do not place them on the city tile, but around it on this central tile. Now let me show you how we will play a game of Exoplanet. Players will take turns until the end of the game is triggered. This happens when all spots on the central city tile are filled with these metal tokens. Like I showed you already, each metal token has a number on the back and this will be the amount of points a player gets for delivering that token to this city tile. A player turn always follows the same turn order. And you can find the turn structure on this turn order card. We have an action phase, a building phase and a power phase. During the action phase, a player will be able to spend action points. Each player gets 5 action points to spend during their turn. In the building phase, we will be able to build domes and solar panels. Building domes will help you to get more explorers to the board and building solar panels will help you to raise the amount of power that you can generate during the power phase. Now let's take a look at what we can do with these 5 action points that we get at the start of our turn. You can find all the actions that you can take during your turn on this Actions Overview card. It shows you the actions that cost action points, but it will also show you all the actions that you can take for free. Let's start by moving an explorer. It costs one action point to move your explorer to another tile. This central tile is considered as one complete tile. So I could move for two action points from here to here, that's one action point, and another action point brings me to the forest. As a free action, when I am on a tile with a resource, that can be a metal token, or can be a wood or a power token, I am allowed to pick it up and place it on top of my explorer. Each explorer can carry at most one token. When you are near the edge of the board, you can explore a new tile. Exploring a new tile costs you also one action point. To perform this action, you have to be on the edge of the board and you have to connect two tiles to the new tile. So I would pick one of the new tiles and I would place it connecting these two tiles to the new tile. So this means that I am not allowed to explore from a tile where I cannot connect two tiles to the new tile, so this would not be allowed. But I can place it here, like I showed you, so from here. And then I'm allowed to move my explorer to this new tile. Maybe now it's a good time to show you all the possible tiles that you can discover during the game. Here you can see the four types of tiles that we can discover during the game. These two we already know. This is a mountain tile and a forest tile. This new one is a crater tile. This is a special one because this is the tile where we will find metal tokens. And just like during setup, when these tiles are discovered, we will be placing a number of tokens depending on the player count. So we would put two metal tokens, two wood tokens and two power tokens on these tiles each time that we discover them during our two player game. And lastly you see the valley tiles. They can have two building spots or one building spot, depending on the tile. On these tiles we will be building domes and solar panels. But more on that later. So exploring the valley tile gives us extra building spots. And if you were to explore during another turn, I could explore this tile, move over here and then immediately place two metal tokens on a tile. 
Of course, we would like to know which number is printed on the back of these metal tokens before we take it back to the central tile and the city tile. For one action point, a player is allowed to look at an action token. This can be an action token on a tile that has one of his explorers, or it can be a metal token that's on top of one of his explorers. There are two exceptions to this rule. The moment you move your explorer to a tile that contains metal tokens, you are allowed to look at one of them for free. And whenever you explore a new crater tile, after moving your explorer to the tile and placing the metal tokens, you are also allowed to look at one of those for free. During the game you can also draw an action card. Drawing an action card costs you two points. Let me show you now what you can find in this action deck. In the action deck you will find two types of cards. The first type of card are species cards. These are species that you discover while you are exploring the planet. The other cards are action cards. During my turn, for free, I can play one card and perform the action that's written on it. For example, this power drain card would let me steal one power from another player. Or this endurance card would give me three additional action points during my turn. Other cards will provide you with actions or choices that you can take and perform during your turn. Each time you take a card from the deck, you have to be mindful because you always have this hand limit to take a look at. At the start of the game, you're only allowed to have one card in your hand. So as a free action during your turn, you're always allowed to play exactly one card or you can also discard any amount of cards to the discard pile. However, you can never play or discard the card that you just drew during this round. As I showed you before, an explorer can carry one token. When you are on a tile with a token, it's a free action to place it on top of your explorer. Each explorer can only carry one token. But when you enter a tile with another token, you're always allowed to drop one of your tokens that you are carrying and replace it with another one. This is also a free action. When you would pick up a metal token, you are not allowed to look at it. So I could pick up one of these two tokens and place it on top of my explorer, but I cannot look at the number on the back. In this situation, if I wanted to look at one of these tokens before picking it up, I would have to spend one action point to look at the token, and then I can decide to place it on top of the explorer or to leave it. During the game, it might happen that you see another explorer that carries a token that you really want. As a free action, you can steal a token from another player. To do this, you have to be on the same tile as the other explorer, and you have to have more explorers on that tile than the other player. Now, in this case, I have two. Orange has one, so I am now allowed to place that token onto one of my explorers. When you steal a metal token, you are even allowed to look at the back of the token once. The same rule applies to other tokens. So I could move my explorer to this tile, paying one action point. Then as a free action, I would be able to place this token onto my explorer. And since I have more explorers than my opponent, I'm now allowed to steal his token and place it on my explorer. So I now have two power tokens instead of none. Another free action takes place whenever you move your explorer to the central tile and it carries a power stone. When you are on the central tile near the city tile, you're allowed to trade this power stone with the city. You would place the power stone back to the supply and you now have two options. For each power stone that you deliver to the city, you can either move your power token one space to the right, gaining one power, or you can move this limiter one spot to the right. By moving the limiter one space at a time, you will be increasing your hand size limit and also the amount of power that you can gather during your turn. If you would ever move your limiter beyond the last space on the power strip, you can now remove it from the game and you have completely upgraded your power strip. Of course, the most important thing that you want to deliver to the city are metal tokens because these will score you points at the end of the game. So as a free action, I'm allowed to replace this token by dropping it and placing this metal token on top of my explorer. 
And then I can move one space by paying one action point to the central tile. As a free action, I am now allowed to drop this metal token on this city tile. This action doesn't cost me action points, but it will cost me power to place my metal token on one of these spots on this central city tile. In a two-player game, this will be the cheapest and the first spot that we can fill with a metal token. If I want to place my metal token here on this spot, it will cost me two power. So to place the metal token on this spot, I would now pay two power. And then I can place my metal token on this spot on the board. And now comes the special part, because now I must place my explorer onto the metal token. This also means that I'm certain to get this amount of points, but it also means that this explorer is locked there on the city tile for the rest of the game. Even more, by taking this action, I will skip the build and the power phase, ending my turn straight away. You will notice that each time a new token will be placed on the city tile, the power cost will increase. So you will have to generate more power to be able to deliver metal tokens further in the game. The highest cost to delivering a metal token to the city tile will be 6 power. I now have one less explorer to use during my turn, so I will have to find a way to get new explorers to the tiles. When a player has finished taking actions, he will move on to the building phase. Players can construct buildings on these valley tiles. Some valley tiles have one building spot, other valley tiles have two building spots. Let me first show you how you will build a dome. Building a dome is the only way to get explorers from your supply to the board. If you have two explorers on a valley tile and one of them is carrying a wood token, you are allowed to spend this wood token and place a dome on the building spot. To finish this action, you will now place another explorer on the tile. If you are on a valley tile with two explorers and one of them is carrying a power stone, you can now use this resource to build a solar panel onto that tile. And it will produce power for you during the power phase. There are also valley tiles that have two building spots. And they can have either two domes, one of each color or two of one color, or it can contain one solar panel. So once a solar panel is built, of course you cannot build any domes onto the tile. Players are allowed to build two domes during one turn, but you can never use an explorer that you just gained to build the second dome. So I would not be allowed to spend this token place one of my domes onto the tile, add an explorer to the tile, and then use him to immediately spend another token and build the second dome. We already know that we need power to deliver metal tokens to the city tile. And during the power phase, it's now the moment where we gain power and we add it to our power strip. During the power phase, we will be gathering power from solar panels. We have solar panels that have a player's color and we have a neutral solar panel. Let's say that it's the end of Green's turn, so now we would look where he would gain power from. First we see that he has an explorer on a solar panel of his color. This would mean that he gets one power from this panel, so we can add that power to the power strip. A player also gains power from another player's solar panel if he has at least two explorers on that tile. So here, green has two explorers on the orange panel, and this allows him again to add a power to the power strip. In this case, it doesn't matter if orange is also on the panel, you just have to have two of your explorers on another player's panel to gain one power. Lastly, we take a look at this neutral panel, and here you have to have the majority. So it's the end of green's turn, so this means orange has majority, Green doesn't get any power from this neutral panel. So at the end of Green's round, he would have gotten one power from his own panel and one power from the orange player's panel. And of course, you can never have more than seven power because that's the limit of the power strip. Now there's only one token that we have not discussed and that's this force token. This force token is a disruptive magnetic field and it will have an effect on some actions during the game. 
Firstly, when this force token is on a solar panel, that solar panel cannot deliver any power during the turn. If the force token is on a valley tile, you cannot build domes or solar panels on this tile as long as the force token is there. If the force token is on a tile with metal tokens, you cannot take the investigation action to look at the back of any metal tokens. And lastly, you can never explore from a tile that contains the force token. So orange would not be allowed to explore from this tile to discover these tiles. So what happens when you move on to a tile with the force token? This costs you one action point, just like a normal movement. But you are now allowed to move the force token to any other spot on the board, except for the central tile. So now, orange could maybe move the force token onto this solar panel, that's green's property. And of course, it would mean that this panel would not deliver force at the end of green's turn. So green will have to remove the force token from his panel, if at the end of his turn, he would want to gather force from this panel. And lastly, if you want to move away from a force token, this will cost you two action points. So if green would like to move from this tile containing the force token to the valley tile, he would have to spend two action points. Once a player delivers the last metal token to the city tile, the game ends immediately. All players now take the explorers and the metal tokens back from the city tile and we will now count all the points. Players gather points from metal tokens that they deliver to the city, and they will add one point for each dome and solar panel that they constructed during the game. Lastly, players also score points from species cards and from some action cards, like this new generation card, that gives me one point if I have it in my hand at the end of the game. You total up all your points, and the player with the most points is the winner of the game. Now you know how to set up and play Exoplanet. If you like this video, please click on the like and subscribe button. If you like this content, you can follow MeepleCare on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. This was MeepleCare, taking care of your Meeple needs.